I'm going to start playing golf video games and commentating myself. So I don't know if you're into that, but I can do that. Okay. Not so well, much. <laughs> the first round of golf I ever played, I shot a 72. That's pretty good. What? On front nine. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's a good way to start. So, Tyler, we're here with Tim Dodge. And, Tim, I interact with you a lot on social media and the Twitter and whatnot. And uh, I have to admit, I don't exactly know your title. Um, so if you could tell us more about what you do over at the Fab Lab at Northampton Community College, and I, I kind of want to get a sense for, yeah, Tyler has been there for a, a long time long at time. Northampton, to get an idea of what, what you do and what you're, you're doing. It's, it's fascinating, and I want to learn a little more. Well, I started out teaching uh, SolidWorks modeling pretty much like this. Actually, this was printed on the uh, Stratasys U-Print machine at the Fab Lab in uh, 2017. Um, from there, I progressed on to a few other classes. Uh, currently, I cover 3D printing, though, which I've been doing since 2003, uh, between like a Z-Corp, a Stratasys, and then I went into some of the more Rep wrap oriented machines. I have a form lab sitting over here next to me at the moment, which I kind of prefer. Um, I know I use uh, some filament in innovations, uh, BFP printers occasionally as well. They're very good for high volume product. I actually use them for production. And all that being said, I understood some of it. Um, what, what are you doing anything 3D printing wise specifically now? We did, we talked with, um, you know, Mike at filament innovations and um, got some ideas of what they're doing. And, and I don't think you're on that scale, of course, but well, or maybe you are. I don't printers. know. I don't build 3D printers, but I do use them. Right. So are, are you able to do any, are you doing anything now with 3D printing um, at the Fab Lab? Is there, is there anything going on there? I don't have anything printing at the moment, but there is a machine over there that I need to fix uh, whenever I get the time to do so. And I mean, what are you what are you getting at? I mean, no, I no, I'm just I'm just curious. Like, yeah, yeah, because we we don't know. Um, I guess I could ask it better. Like, what uh, we're trying to learn more about 3D printing. Obviously, you're you're in the field. You know, what have you been seeing that's going on that is uh, I don't know interesting to you? What what have you noticed that maybe someone like Tyler and I w wouldn't have noticed? Or well, I, I'd like to think that the direct metal 3D printing is going to come down into the sub $10,000 range. I know two years ago there was an interesting um, seminar at Lehigh on additive manufacturing in uh, May 2017, and there was a Penn State startup uh, that, granted, you, you could print pretty much a tangerine, uh, but it was $100,000, whereas 10 years ago you're looking at like a million, two million. Right. Uh, I know a lot of the early uh, patents on the direct metal, direct metal uh, 3D printing were out of Germany and then uh, 3D systems. But th this sort of thing, I mean, ultimately it's neat to, you know, print in plastic and all that. And I know people right now are doing a lot of, you know, face masks, face shields, uh, which, you know, makes sense to have in plastic and not in metal. But you know, a lot of things really, the final target material is, is metal. And you know, like Elon Musk, for instance, love him or hate him, but the rocket nozzles on uh, his, a lot of his rockets were actually 3D printed because the, the cooling channels in these things look a lot. You ever have it like an ant farm where there's all these little squiggly lines all over the sure. place? And it's, it's almost impossible to machine that. I mean, the oil guys do underground sideways drilling and all that, but you can't make too many turns. Mm -hmm. You talk to Sean Kernan about that, but you can 3D print, uh, I mean, some crazy stuff. Like, you know, this, here's actually, this is a projection of a four-dimensional object. Oh, that's pretty cool. That's yeah. So, really complex. I mean, it, 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 it was harsh to model. Yeah. A lot of people look at time as the fourth dimension, like this thing. Yeah, I'm basically taking the cube and like stretching it out. You know, is that plastic or is that metal? I printed this at the uh, Fab Lab. Uh, this is plastic. This is a PLA yeah. plastic, which is biodegradable. 
if you leave it outside in the sun, maybe it'll degrade in 10 years. If it's underground, it might take 100 years, but it's pretty good stuff. It's derived from corn. Uh, this is, you know, it would be almost impossible. There's two basic types of 3D printers right now. You basically have your overgrown caulk gun or toothpaste tube where you're laying down like a layers of caulk, which is how this was built. I don't think you can quite see the lines. You yeah, I can see it. it. Yeah. Whereas on this thing here, this was done with a laser, and it's actually more like a two-part epoxy, where the second part is the light, a 405 nanometer of uh, roughly purplish light, and you probably don't see any lines at all. No. Oh, no. And that's harder to explain, but lasers. <laughs> yeah, that works. Yeah, yeah I, honestly, I, I never thought of 3D printing in metal before. I always thought of it in that filament type plastic. Well, um, the Stratasys patents expired in 2007 and 2008. There was a guy up at Cornell. He was the first guy that did a thing called Fab at Home while he was segueing off his physics PhD. That became the core of what later became RepRap, which then MakerBot took a lot of RepRap stuff and founded their company. And they were making a lot of very decent filament printers, filament being overgrown yeah. bead whacker. Yeah, stuff. that's what I think of. Yeah. This is the cheapest stuff right now. I mean, you can get a 3D printer that uses this stuff. It It's not going to print, you know, Michelangelo's P, uh, Pieta or anything. Uh, maybe it will, but it'd be like this big. But those start around $200. You got like Mono Price, Da Vinci XYZ. I kind of like, if you're really serious about making something like this, I hate to say it, but if you ain't Dutch, you ain't much. The Ultimaker at around 1,000, 1,500 is pretty good. If you got to go really large scale, then the filament innovations BFP is almost impossible to beat its price to value. Interesting. And the, okay, and I, the we'll Fab Lab I saw has been in the news for making ma masks, right? Yeah. Not like Phantom of the Opera either, but that would also work. <laughs> yeah. So like, for, for someone who doesn't know what the Fab Lab is, can you kind of d describe it? it it's, um, well, let, let's just say there's, there's a lot of uh, wood work going on where n n people can't have like planers and circular saws and all the machinery they have unless they're more than a millionaire, you probably have to have $10 million in your pocket to like discretionary spending. Then there's the 3D printing digital side. There's a little machine shop. It's basically the ultimate prototyping lab for anything from surgical masks using sewing machines. They cut the stuff with laser, you know, uh, a laser, and then it goes onward with I mean, it doesn't use is that, right? And is that open, like all you know, open to all Northampton community college students? I would assume, d depending on what courses they're taking. Well, because you literally can cut off a limb. Yeah. Well, <laughs> it, you have to have some training. I mean, you don't just. That people don't let you just walk into a nuclear power plant for similar reasons. No, and I think that's a good thing. So yeah. Yeah. Now, if you are a Northampton County Community College student, you will have an easier time of uh, scheduling the necessary training and whatnot. If you're just a Northampton County citizen, yeah, you would probably have to go to the Fab Lab intro session as a starter. I think that's still held once a month. Mm -hmm. And that's free. And it's usually at like 5.30 on like a Tuesday or Wednesday. And so, yeah. kind of an overview of everything. The best way to really start at the Fab Lab is take a class. Just take a class, any class. Mm -hmm. Just get in there. I mean, what do they say? The journey of a thousand miles begins with a first class at the Fab Lab. <laughs> Tyler, you you've been on campus a lot. You know, I feel like you might. This might be something that'd be right up your alley. Well, is this on main campus? Is this is this off Green it's, Pond uh, Road? It's uh, right across from the Social Still. Yeah, so this is on or, the south. Uh, El, El Jeffs or El Jefes, who have really excellent hot sauce. The La Comadre, I recommend it. 
totally. I call it the nuclear option. <laughs> well, I don't think when I was there, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but well, I, I've been there for a long time. But when I, when I was like a, a student, college student, um, like full-time college student, I don't think that that was there in like 2005, 2006, right? No, I think it started in 2009 and it was only like three hours a day. And I know I walked in a couple times and it was always like during my lunch break and I'm like, boy, I'm never going to get here. It's like nine to 12. Yeah. Uh, now it's open a lot more, um, you know, between Sean Brendel and Amy Rotzel and the rest of the crew, they cover pretty much from nine till nine, uh, Monday through Thursday and Fridays, I think it cut off at nine. Usually there's like a Saturday nine to 12 or two. Um, ultimately, if you show a lot of potential and you become an instructor, those hours extend. Uh, I mean, I've only ever just, been over to that, to that building once for a, I, I was in a Spanish class and we cooked a Spanish. Hablo Espanol? Yeah. No, I didn't learn much. I'll be honest. <laughs> mucho Espanol? Yo no, no. en México por Un poquito. Tres años en la fundación. Anyway, there's two for English. Cool. Well, hey, I, uh, thanks for coming on and, and kind of we want to get a sense of we're talking to people like there's a lot of talk about 3D printing. So that's why I wanted to have you on and kind of, you know, get a sense of more on all the stuff that you're doing if and, and what it's learn all about. It, have a place or if they want to learn it, yeah. they can, you know, Google Google Fab Lab Northampton Community College and and go I from think there. The, the best website is fablabncc.net. All right. Um, noted. We'll put that in there. <laughs> Let me double. I mean, we got, we got to yeah, verify that. You can uh, you can message me after. Dot net. Yeah. Yeah, and we'll put that in there. So, yeah, and and uh, thank you for the leads on the other people too. I'll reach out to them and and we'll hopefully get them on. They're probably over there right now. Yeah, but I probably, yeah. Massive it's just weird, but between between like we have to still do stuff. It's it's weird. Yeah. Yeah, like life goes on, and it's it's um. It's interesting, but we definitely want to uh, schedule them in, and we appreciate you taking some time. Yeah, I feel a little bit like the Martian right now. I'm the only guy on a two and a half acre property. That is, that's like gotta it, though. Be, yeah. yeah, it is probably until it's like two in the morning. <laughs> you you have There's to like stay no over there. You. Uh, uh, what? You have to stay there all the time. Well, I'm not at the Fab Lab right now. I'm at my company. So a company yeah. is kind of like a child. I mean, <laughs> yeah, you gotta keep it rolling. So, yeah. Yeah. hey, all right, thank you. We appreciate your time, and you know, I'm sure I'll talk to you some more in the coming weeks. But be safe. Be all right, safe. George. You too, Tyler. Right. Have a good Thanks. one. See you soon. Bye.